Les proches aidants sont essentiels dans les soins à apporter aux personnes atteintes de démence dans les établissements de soins de longue durée. Cependant, en fin de vie, les proches aidants ressentent souvent du stress, sont bouleversés et ont des doutes quant à la façon de prendre les bonnes décisions pour leurs proches. L'étude My Support vise à soutenir les proches aidants et le personnel des établissements de soins dans le processus de prise de décision concernant les personnes à un stade avancé de démence en fin de vie. Le Guild des soins de confort, qui offre de l'information sur la démence et les soins de confort en fin de vie, est un élément central de l'étude MySupport. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Marcel Arquin from Quebec, Canada. Today I wish to talk to you about the Comfort Care booklet, which I co-authored to help families understand the different challenges in the care of the patient near the end of life. It's basically, it's to present the possibility of using a palliative care approach, which we usually talk was only for cancer patients, but it can also be applied in the context of advanced uh, dementia. So the booklet has really five different uh, sections. In the first section, we explain the natural evolution of these diseases. There are different types of, of dementia, but very, towards the end, they sort of look more alike uh, one to uh, another. Difficulty swallowing, the, the presence of uh, the repeated infection, etc. It's part of natural evolution of the diseases. It's not lack of care in general. So we have to remind this to families. So we inform them on the different treatment options. We also tell them that the comfort care option is very often what the patient would have wanted if he didn't want to until the bitter end of the disease and also that there shouldn't be guilt feelings if the comfort care option is preferred, but at the same time that we respect values and beliefs. I then reviewed all the literature regarding these um, the most controversial issues. First, about hydration and nutrition issues. I remind people that it's important to look for reversible causes such as uh, too much drug that makes the patient sleepy and also mouth infection which happens very often but in general there seems to be a scientific consensus that feeding tubes are not recommended only to prolong life at this stage of dementia the question of intravenous or subcutaneous fluids given what i read is that it may help some patients, but it can also contribute to discomfort by increasing bronchial secretions, delaying pain-free coma state, and prolonging the dying process. There was a study in the in care of uh, patients with cancer where they tested uh, small amounts of intravenous fluids versus large amounts of intravenous fluids, I mean, normal, uh, like one liter per day versus about 100 milliliters per day, so half a cup. Um, and they found out um, that uh, did, that didn't change the patient comfort. That was, what was most important was mouth care, regular mouth care to hydrate uh, mouth, uh, dryness of mouth being uh, very uh, causing a lot of discomfort. So if in, if you even if you uh, give intravenous fluids, but you don't uh, give regular mouth care, the patient will be uncomfortable. On the other hand, if you don't give uh, intravenous fluid, but only sips of the patients can can drink and regular mouth care, you should be more comfortable. But there was a, a Dutch study that actually demonstrated by using uh, observational pain scales that patients in which we withhold um, fluids, intravenous fluids, uh, actually they are they look comfortable. So it is also my experience that these patients will slowly go into a sleepy state, but they 
uh, not suffering that much. Now the question of antibiotics for end-stage pneumonia. It depends on the goals of care for, for a particular patient. If the goal of care is that please do not prolong my life, just give me, just maximize my comfort, then antibiotics can be withheld and treatment will then aim at symptom control, which means uh, probably that we have to give morphine or other opioid uh, because it's really uh, very helpful to decrease uh, breathing labor and pain and chest pain uh, due to the pneumonia. And even if you give antibiotics at this stage, very often the patients will die anyway. And it's important to uh, prevent as much as possible all the discomfort that they can have even under antibiotic therapy. Now people question the use of morphine. Morphine is going to kill the patient. Well, that's actually not true at all. Uh, morphine actually makes them much more comfortable. It's the best drug that you can give when the patient is breathing rapidly and seems to be a, a discomfort. Within minutes, you will see a, a great improvement in the patient's condition. The question of cardiopulmonary resuscitation uh, sometimes is discussed with family. It is clear from the literature that CPR is not recommended in advanced dementia because it can harm the patient and has actually very little chances of success. So this is clear in my mind. You, you have to discuss it with family, but uh, the recommendation is not to use it in advanced dementia. The question of hospital transfer when a patient is in a nursing home. Hospital transfer should be exceptional at this stage of the disease because the patient is going into an environment which is sometimes not extremely familiar with the kind of care it needs. But I do transfer uh, patients sometimes, for instance, if there is a hip fracture, just to stabilize the fracture, they go to hospital for two days and then they come back uh, to the nursing home. And I, I believe this is the right thing to do because it's the best way to prevent uh, more pain. But otherwise, uh, each time you uh, need to transfer this advanced dementia patient to hospital, you should think about really what benefit uh, we will retire from that transfer. It's not always evident. Comfort care does not mean abandonment, and this is a point that should be stressed to family. It is low-tech, high-touch care. It's a different type of care. We're not sort of aggressively treating the patient. We're sort of of looking for comfort and dignity. So symptom control, mouth care, comfort feeding, which is you don't aim to give all the calories necessitated. You just give the patient what he can handle, the food uh, that he can swallow, the quantities that he can, uh, again, take. But uh, you, you don't push. And, and very often in advanced dementia, people have uh, difficulty swallowing and also the it's like they don't want to swallow or they don't know how to swallow anymore. And I think it's, there's no point in forcing food in these uh, patients. We also give them attention to dignity with grooming the patient, looking at every way to make him comfortable. And it's very recommended now to use the uh, observational pain scale on a regular basis to detect uh, discomfort and then we adjust uh, treatment uh, according to what we find. The, so it's, that's low-tech care, it's different, but I think it's more appropriate at this stage. And then we also say to the family that it's low-tech, high-touch care, which means you can touch the patient, you can, be, you can talk to the patient, uh, you can massage the patient, you can put some music in the room, etc. Whatever makes the patient feel uh, in a positive environment for him. Now, I put all that in the booklet. And um, in 2011, the World Health Organization published a list of palliative care, better practices for older people. 
and they included the booklet in in their uh, list, which was uh, very good news for us. Sort of a, a good caution from the World Health Organization that we're doing the right thing. So the take-home messages, I would say, are uh, advanced dementia is eternal disease, and the comfort care option is relevant in this context. For patients whose goal of care is not life prolongation, shared understanding of the comfort care option by doctors, nurses, and family members can improve comfort of the dying person and family satisfaction with care. And good symptom management, including regular mouth care and appropriate use of opioids and sedative, should help achieve a peaceful death in most cases. Thank you for your attention. I hope this will help you.